Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about and address the most popular comments that I've seen on pretty much all of my recent videos. I've noticed this especially on my comparing stretch res video which blew up and I think I noticed it because that had a lot of people who have never seen one of my videos before. The comment that I'm talking about is everyone spamming, how do you get zero ping? Zero ping by the way? I wish I had zero ping. Holy crap! Zero ping! Zero ping! The clip I'm going to show you guys right now is the beginning of a Team Rumble match that I'm just going to hop into and it's going to be before we're on the battle bus. If you notice that my ping is not zero, it's not high by any means but as you can see it's definitely not zero. Then suddenly it starts dropping and goes straight down to zero. So what does this mean? Am I a hacker? How did I manage to do that? Do I have fiber internet? Do I live on top of epic servers? The answer to all these things is no. If I go into my settings, you can see my ping says 12 when connected to the NAE servers, which is still pretty damn low, but it's not zero. So I guess I'm a clickbaiting fraud, right? Well, not really. The reason it appears to be zero is from a feature that Epic implemented in patch 7.30. They said they fixed an issue in the net debug UI that will cause it to show too high of a ping value. While I don't not want to believe Epic, it's kind of difficult to interpret this as saying anything other than our servers aren't too good and everyone is complaining about ping values, so we'll just pretend a bug made it show too high of a ping and we'll just lower it. And the reason that I think this is because if you played during this period, you definitely felt it. I usually averaged around 30 to 40 ping and have averaged that ever since I started playing Fortnite over a year ago. Then over the past couple months my ping got insanely high to around 40 to 50 and then 60. And nothing has changed in terms of what could possibly affect my ping. I'm on the same internet in the same place so obviously it's that the servers were experiencing some problems. Then all of a sudden Epic implements this patch and everyone all of a sudden has much lower ping. I even remember people on Twitter talking about how low their ping was now. But I don't think it's legitimate, mainly because my ping is zero and I've seen a lot of people saying that they also have zero ping. At first I thought it was only in creative, but I even get zero ping in the normal online game modes too when that just shouldn't be possible. So you don't actually get zero ping. Wow Jerrion, you truly are a fraud. Hold up, while it's not actually zero, there's still gotta be a reason why it's pretty damn low and why so many people in the comments can't even seem to get close to 10 or 20 or 30 ping. And trust me when I say this, I'm not that close to the servers, so I want to talk about a few things that you can do to lower your ping. A lot of people might tell you that you can't actually lower your ping unless you move closer to the server. Technically, they're right, but your ping isn't just affected by how close you are to the server, it's affected by a lot more than that. Think of it this way, if it could only be changed by how close you are to the server, then why would your ping fluctuate and cause you to lag if people are in your house or if your ISP decides to bottleneck your service? Let's first start off with understanding exactly what your ping is and what can affect it. Then we can get into how you can take steps to making it more stable and hopefully lowering it as much as you can. You can think of your ping as the time it takes for your game to respond to the server. It measures latency in your connection, which is why it's reported in MS, which stands for milliseconds. The lower your ping, the less time it takes for your game to communicate with the server and therefore the less lag and less latency you'll feel. In general, low ping is anywhere from 0 to probably 20 or 30 ping. Decent or kind of normal ping is 30 to maybe 60 or so. And then high ping is anything above 60 or 70. The difference between 15 and 30 ping isn't really noticeable, but the difference between say 40 and an insanely high ping like 150 or 200 will definitely be noticeable. When your ping is above 100, that means it's taking your game a tenth of a second to respond to the server, which may not sound like a lot, but trust me, you'll notice it. Your editing will feel delayed, your buildings will place way after you press place, and your character will probably skip around even if you don't move them. That's why they call it server lag, everything is delayed or lagging behind and slow. On the other hand, zero ping means your game should feel flawless and smooth. The reason all these people, including myself, can't actually have zero ping is because zero ping means that there's literally no delay between your client and the game. I would have to live on top of the servers to get anything close to zero ping. In North America, NAE servers are located in Virginia and Ohio, and NA West servers are located in Northern California and Oregon. I'm on the East Coast, but go to school up north, so now we're close to Virginia, and I'm on the coast, so not near Ohio. So in reality, I shouldn't have anything less than 20 ping. I'm not completely sure where the servers are for other regions like EU and such, so if you guys know exactly where they are, I'd love to know in the comments below. So anyways, even if you don't live near the servers, you can still do a few things to improve your ping and connection. The first and by far the most important tip I have is to use a wired connection. This means get an ethernet cable. 
If you're playing on a PC, a laptop, Xbox, or PS4, you definitely need an Ethernet cable. This is because your ping depends more upon the stability and the quality of your internet than your actual internet speeds. With a wired connection, you get faster speeds, lower latency, and zero interference, which is probably the most important part. If you're using a wireless connection and are connected to your Wi-Fi, your speeds will be much slower because of all the interference from other devices like your cell phone, your brother's iPad, your mom's laptop, which are all using the same Wi-Fi. Without an Ethernet, your connection will likely drop sometimes and cause huge fluctuations in your ping from whatever you normally get to crazy numbers like 300 or 400 ping. You want your connection to be as secure and stable as possible, and the easiest and cheapest way to achieve that is with an ethernet cable. You can get a really long one, I think like 100 feet for like $10, and honestly if I see enough comments for people without them, maybe I'll do a giveaway of ethernets. So your ethernet cable should be plugged directly into your router or into an ethernet port in your wall. If you don't have an ethernet port in your wall or your router isn't really close to you, something my brother and I found really helpful were powerline ethernet adapters. You basically just plug one adapter into your router with an ethernet cable and then plug it into an electrical outlet and then you'll do the same wherever you want in your house as long as there's another electrical outlet where you can plug the other adapter into. This way you can get a wired connection from literally anywhere in your house. These are a little more expensive but shouldn't run you anything more than $30. With these two things in mind you really shouldn't have any other excuse to not have a wired connection. I'm telling you right now if you're playing on Wi-Fi you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. A wired connection will decrease your ping and make your game feel way more responsive. My other tip is if your internet is slow even with a wired connection. That likely means two things. One, either your internet speed is slow, or two, you have many people using your internet to download or upload things all at once. Most of the time, even if your internet speed isn't fast, your ping won't improve by that much if you get faster internet. It's the same idea of diminishing returns if you get a higher refresh rate on your monitor. Will it make a difference? Maybe slightly, but is it worth the cost and time to upgrade? Probably not. If you're looking for a minimum internet speed to have, a decent connection and ping, 10 megabytes per second is probably a good starting point. Anything less, like 1 megabyte per second, is too slow to stream or to sustain playing online games like Fortnite especially with how bad we have seen some of the servers get. You can check your current internet speed by just doing a speed test online. Your download will probably be higher than your upload speed, which is normal as you want to have a faster download speed because you'll rarely be uploading anything compared to how much data and videos and other things you'll download daily. Another little trick is to reset your router. At my house, our router is kind of old, so sometimes our download and upload speeds get really slow if you don't reset it every week or so. Also, realize that your internet speed will be much faster connected to Ethernet than over Wi-Fi, and you can compare that with just a speed test on your phone compared to a speed test on your PC that's connected with an Ethernet cable. My last tip is for people who can't get Ethernet cables right now and are stuck on wireless Wi-Fi connections. This will be especially helpful for people on Switch and mobile who can't be connected with an Ethernet. What you can do is change your Wi-Fi's channel numbers to stop interference from other signals from other devices in your house like garage door openers or microwaves or even your neighbor's devices. This happens because most Wi-Fi signals have the same frequency and this can cause interference and your Wi-Fi to be slower than it should be. Just look up how to change your Wi-Fi channel on your router as it's pretty different if you have a Verizon router or a Netgear router or whichever brand you have but I guarantee there will be a guide online of how to do it. A lot of the time you can make it auto set itself for the least interference but you'll want to choose either channel 1, 6, or 11 as those have no frequency overlap with each other. And also this depends if you have a 2.5GHz router or a 5GHz router so just make sure to look up your router's model to see which one you have. This will definitely help improve your Wi-Fi and improve your ping if you're forced to play wireless. Otherwise, again, get an ethernet cable as it will be the best investment of your gaming life. Overall, my ping is lying to you guys. I don't really get zero ping, so stop freaking commenting it on all of my videos. But my ping is still very low and stable, so I definitely think that the tips and tricks that I mentioned should help you guys lower your own pings. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. This video shoutouts go to Maru, Matt Hammer, Chromatic, and Stefan Leduski who all use my code in the item shop. Make sure to send me pictures of you using my code so I can shout you guys out in my next video. We reached a crazy amount of supporters on Epic, but I haven't been getting that many pictures, so definitely make sure to do that. So that's it for me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.